All right, then. So there you go. We're going to go right in and get a look at uh, the perspective on what is going on. Well, not just in Abuja and different parts of the country, actually. So that's where you get to see the state of the polity. The National Assembly have got a huge role to play. At first, there's a PIB going on there, the public yeah. hearing. Then, then that scenario, hopefully, if they have an opinion or two. And then they're going to talk about, uh, they're looking at the COVID-19 funds as well, yeah. in terms of what has happened, how should all of these things play, and uh, the questions about COVID vaccines. So mm. there's just so much on their plate as well. Yeah, especially, I mean, we're looking forward to resumption in a couple of days. So, yeah. I mean, I imagine that their, their desks should be, <laughs> should be filled with a lot of files which they have to look into. I mean, like you mentioned, COVID-19. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I mean, we're not sure when the vaccines will come, but don't forget the National Assembly has a huge role yeah. to play. And in security, I mean, I mean, they've talked about security time and time and again. So, the, the huge one of the huge roles of the National Assembly in this COVID-19 vaccine thing is budgeting for the for the vaccine itself. <laughs> you remember when we had that, that conversation that that you referenced over and over again? People are wondering because, uh, first of all, there is no provision in the budget passed so far yeah. for, for the vaccines. And uh, we need to find that money, wherever it is going to come from. The government is targeting something in the region of 70% of the people to vaccinate, prioritize government officials, prioritize well, not prioritize government officials, really. Uh -oh. I mean, prioritize. I think that statement was just made by a kind of government officials I mean, shouldn't be priority. No, no. What, well, <laughs> that is, it's not prioritize, prioritize like that, but show leadership of sorts. We are saying that medical practitioners should be the first to mm -hmm. go. That's fantastic. But that's just one yeah. of several issues in the day. So, Well, uh, and don't forget, um, are they happy now with the cold chain we've got? Who knows? And there's no way we can forget the Electoral Act. There's just so much, but I'm not sure we have all of too that much. time to look at all those <laughs> issues. But Mark, well, we've got our hands full this morning. Well, it looks like a buffet. <laughs> And I'm sure that the members I have in the studio are very capable. Uh, they're capable of chewing on all of them. Uh, I have with me Honorable Yunusa Ahmad Abubakar, who's a member of the APC. He's a member of House Committee on Loans, AIDS, and Debt Management. Honorable, you're welcome. Thank you, ma'am. And I also have with me Honorable Nkema Bonta, who is a member of the PDP and also former Chairman House Committee on Public Petition. You're mm -hmm. welcome, Honorable. Well, they keep increasing the list of things uh, for us to chew on this morning. And I've said both of you gentlemen look very capable to me. The first thing, uh, you know, which popped up while we were reviewing the papers is the lead, big lead headline on the front page of Nigerian Tribune, which says reps to begin probe of 83.9 <coughs> billion Naira COVID-19 funds. This is a size of 10 billion, I, I think. Uh, which uh, the Joint House, Joint and Sen Joint House and Senate Committee on Health recently invited the Minister of Health to come and explain, uh, which which they said was not approved for vaccine alone. So it looks like the House seems to be beaming a such light on the funds that have been provided to fight COVID-19, both in term terms of uh, health um, provisions and also in terms of vaccine. What's what has prompted this? Do you want to quickly give a, a response to that? Are you aware of this? And if you, if you are, what has prompted it? Oh, well, we are yet to resume plenaries. Uh, we are told um, we will resume on the 9th. But be it as it may, <clears throat> in Nigeria, COVID came to become a huge business. It became something that um, the other man couldn't understand. It became something the other man felt exploited. From the beginning of the COVID till now, we only hear billions of Naira and um, we can't really virtually see or uh, say exactly how this fund uh, went. At the point we are told that states must uh, declare COVID or what not to get some billions. Uh, Kogi is an example, the politics there about the COVID-19 and oh, what not. So if 80 point something billion cannot be accounted for, then rest most uh, actual in the usual manner, inquire into it. I pray that at the end of the inquiry, um, the results and the findings should be made public. So you are aware know. of the probe that's about to... About I, I, I am not aware of it. It's something, but I'm aware that there's a lot of funny things happening around COVID fund and the operators of the COVID fund. Mm. I'm aware that people became billionaires 
out of COVID proceeds, out of COVID transactions. You saw what happened during the palliative uh, scandal and scramble. So these are all, the whole chain going on. And I pray that a stop or a control should be put to it. We should not use COVID fund at the expense of those um, who should um, get the COVID. If you go out there, most people will tell you, we don't believe in COVID because it's business. Government are trying to do business. Because they're also seeing COVID-related funds being used in a manner to benefit very few and not to treat actually the, uh, the, the sickness, the virus. If we continue this way, then COVID may not leave us at all because people distrust the operators of stopping COVID. People don't have belief in them because of the way the funds are being used, because of the management of the COVID and, uh, and, uh, and the information regarding COVID. So we should change tactics. We should say something. I must urge reps to please, not just doing the paperwork uh, by writing the paper, to go deep down and let the public get the result. Let the public know what actually the findings are. They should not just disappear like a tea party. There must be a result in it. Otherwise, we shouldn't even start at all. Mm. Which is very laudable advice. However, you know, it's very worrisome too. If, you know, everything, no, nothing is sacred anymore. The fact that, you know, a lot of Nigerians did have their fears uh, when COVID broke out uh, and how government was going to handle it in a manner they thought would be transparent, in a manner that engendered confidence in a manner that was not business as usual, so to speak. So when we begin to see uh, reps probing 89 point something billionaire COVID-19 funds today, uh, last week it was House and Senate Committee on Health probing or asking questions around 10 billion naira, which they said was not just for vaccines alone. You know, there are huge questions as to is it, you know, what exactly is going on? Are we operating without transparency, especially around an illness that, you know, is raising a lot of skepticism uh, amongst Nigerians? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I was just listening to my colleagues, and that is really very, very disturbing. In fact, to say disturbing is an understatement. You've just said it. We are the people's representative. This is the perception of the people. And if the arms of the executive fail, the perception is wrong, then they should prove otherwise. And hence, I uh, appreciate the fact that we have been on a long uh, recess. Prior to the recess, we were busy with the 2021 20, budget to be put in place. So the attention that was given to a lot of oversighting following the plenary procedures has been a little bit uh, understand, delayed and all attention has been shifted to the budget. By the time we finish the budget, we have to go on recess for the Christmas and the New Year. We are about to resume 20-something January, then this issue of the APC registration came and we were extended, extrapolated to... 9 February, even that 9 February, we are not even sure because that very day, the house was uh, postponed to 9 February. The same APC timetable changed. It is just more or less starting now. So we are not even sure when, but the earlier we resume, the better. Even if we have to call and open and resume sitting just to investigate this phenomenon, the, the issue of the 10 billion is even there, mm. which was an uh, acronym for the vaccine. And now from the hearing at the Senate, you start hearing that it's not for vaccine alone. Then now this issue of <laughs> over getting to 90 billion to be spent. And throughout, just like my colleague have said, we have been observing and forget about what we observed but what we filtered in from our constituents, the concern about the so many phone enormously that has been going in into this COVID-19, let somebody to, to, to really as a kind of uh, question mark in the whole scenario, just like everybody says. In fact, for you to start even saying that there is something sneaky, fishy that is going on all this process, 
I think is like an understatement. But it is now the issue, who will investigate that? And this is one of the primary responsibility, especially of the Congress, House of Representatives. And I think we are now belt tied to see that we see this thing to the end. Mm -hmm. We must see what is actually, what is the devil bedeviling this scenario. And I think, just like my colleague have said, the earlier the better. Let, let it not just be paperwork. We should go nitty gritty. In fact, if we will suspend everything, the 2020 budget has been gone. They have been extended the capital to maybe sometime around March. So we are yet for them to finish so that we go, go for that oversighting. But this issue of COVID-19, look at what happened in the United States. The moment the, the new president took over, he swing into actions. So I think we should pay due diligence and uh, credence to this issue of the COVID-19. The earlier we nip it in the bud, the better. Well, it's already out of the bud. This COVID-19 uh, is now a... It's now a flower in, f in full bloom, however ugly the flower looks. You know, but this, is where, this is where we are. I mean, as a country, a different state are, are, are adopting different approaches. The PTF constantly briefing just yesterday. Uh, you know, they talked about states uh, with high, that are high risk, even local governments that are high risk, and we're seeing responses to that. So COVID is in one basket, uh, but it's very closely related to to the security of Nigerians, because if COVID isn't threatening their lives, uh, you have security, which, you know, came into sharp relief over the holiday season. Uh, you ha had uh, bandits on the prowl. Kidnapping was rife. People, you know, did not feel quite safe traveling the roads. A lot of people prefer to go by air, uh, those who could afford it, that is. But a lot of people just stayed put. And then all the stories that were filtering in uh, was not very encouraging. Uh, so, again, you know, there were questions as to what exactly was happening when it came to security. Just not too long after, we now saw uh, the president change service chiefs, um, you know, after years, or should we say months, for the call, uh, of the call for the removal of the service chiefs. Just wondering now... Uh, I don't know whether to use that song. Now that we have love, what are we going to do with it? Now that we've seen change of the service chiefs, what should we be expecting? Uh, do you really think that it really makes a huge difference? Because some people are saying it's the same equipment they're going to be working with. What, what major thing is going to change? What are your thoughts on that, Honorable? Well, if you ask me, the change of service chiefs, we could say is a welcome development, even though belated. We expect a lot from the new service chiefs, but can they give what they don't have? I want to suggest through the media that we should call a very, very emergency security summit of the critical stakeholders of this area. We should go back to board. I expect the new service chiefs to go back to board and produce a new security architecture for us. Within the next two months, we should begin to see changes so it doesn't be like a change of bathing. So it shouldn't be like the same person doing the same thing. You see, one thing we want them to do is to inject new ideas in our security system. We should inject two ideas. They should make us believe that the government is serious in fighting insurgents and bringing security. After all, after all, that was the cardinal point of their, their campaign, security. So at some yeah. point, you actually did lose hope uh, or you Question that government wasn't serious in fighting Boko Haram. You don't need a soothsayer to, to say that or to know it. Yeah, you and me will know that um, the seriousness in fighting Boko Haram is um, between the uh, zero to ten, you put it at four. Because one, is a war, the Boko Haram are facing battle there. Our colleagues from that side can't go home. They can't, f yeah, Boko Haram have even put their flags in some local governments, meaning that they've claimed those territories. And we were assured that they, they uh, just relieved Chief of Staff wouldn't return until he conquered. Did he conquer before he returned? It's a big war. But we must put all the necessary support. Because without peace, we can't progress. Without security, we can't do nothing. It's, it's a very serious issue, and we should take it as being serious. We should take it so. I will plead with uh, our dear presidents to 
do all he could to do that. A uh, long time ago, there was a ban not to give us uh, sell arms to us. Mm. I don't, but I think now they've relaxed it a bit. We should also budget and get new arms. Apart from that, we should be sure that the service chiefs also know what to do. We must also boost the morale of our soldiers. If you look at their morale alone, if going by social media is anything to be used at all, at the river service chiefs, you saw all over the media, even military men jubilating. So is there something we do not know that is going on there? We should think and uh, we, we think and do things seriously that new ideas should go in there. If possible, funding. I know that during budget, we always give them enough money to do the needful. You see, we should also not just investigate. We should make sure that the money used for security should be used, uh, a budget for security should be properly used for security. Why are we having obsolete equipment? Why is the Boko Haram having a better equipment? Now, I also read that we are negotiating to pay once it's something billion or thereabout to Boko Haram to stop insurgents. Is that the best approach? After paying their money, will they stop? Or will they use to update their own equipment at our detriment? A whole lot of questions. I, I saw the security chief saying today that they are aware of the expectations from them. I hope he really understands the expectation and say they will add value. He should not only add value, he should add real value to what we have. We need to see that in the shortest possible time because the insecurity is spreading. You it's said spreading. real value. Could there be fake value? Of course, there are fake values. <laughs> there are fake values. There are paper, paper and TV, social media values. That these are the fake values. You tell us what is not real. Oh, Boko Haram is conquered. It's fake value. It's self when we know they are there. Oh, Boko Haram is no more. Oh, they will be wiped away in two days' time when they are actually dealing with us. So we want to see that the residents of those areas not East can relax, can go home freely, can walk, mm. can add value. Part of the reason we have food shortage today is the insurgents, is the insecurity. Part of the reason that, that the economy is not stable today is insecurity. It's affecting foreign investments, even in, 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 in internal investment. Are you, going to, are you going to terminate to go to North East to invest? It's difficult. Even to do a proper legislative work overside there is near impossible. Mm. So you yeah. can see what we're suffering from. It's a very complex issue, Honorable, and it looks like um, the security chiefs have their work cut out for them. I do know that in the House, uh, one of the things, that one of the issues that members had raised, especially members from that particular area, was the issue of super camps. They wanted the super camps dismantled and figured that, you know, one of the reasons why the attack seemed to be on the increase uh, was because the super camps had sprung up. Do you think that um, the military chiefs will be changing their strategy anytime soon with regards to that issue of super camps? Well, the issues are so many, but be it as it may, uh, that suffice to say that uh, I belong to the House uh, Committee, this Ninth Assembly Committee on Defense. Mm -hmm. So I'm very, very much to some extent conversant with the situation. Uh, we should have hope. At least there's green, I mean, green light at the end of the tunnel, not just ordinary light, but green. Suffice to say, you see, during, like I said, we have been on recess. Much activities have not been there. We have been reading a lot of things on newspapers. But it is uh, an open knowledge that uh, during the January 1st broadcast of Mr. President, and I think assenting the budget, he made a speech, which is quite extraordinary for the president to have made a speech on the... I mean, New Year Day, he has mm -hmm. not been doing that. What catches is this issue of this security. He did promise that they will see the end of this uh, insurgency, uh, banditry, name it, by the end of this year. And uh, probably pursuant to his promise, we can see, though belittle, like my colleague have said, the changing of the service chiefs. And uh, from the look of things, he might have picked a square peg, you know, in a square hall. Uh, Erabo and uh, the other, what is his That's name? Here, the chief of army staff? Is the chief of army staff, yes. They were there. They served previously as theater commanders. 
and I think Erabwe maybe took over from the present chief of uh, army staff, something like that. So they are very conversant with the issue. And I'm telling you, if the Boko Haram terrorism has been tamed, all other issues in, in form of security like banditry will be tamed. Because it is now an evident knowledge, this banditry, especially in the northern part, which has escalated now to the southern part, especially mm -hmm. the southwest, is an extension of the Boko Haram. They've changed tactics. I'm not supposed to discuss their, 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 their security, uh, I mean, their strategy, but maybe it might impair the security, but it is an open knowledge that even those people who engage in this kidnapping, they are like Aram boys of the Boko Haram. They treat the victim with the Boko Haram. Instead of Boko Haram coming doing the kidnapping themselves, because of all the security barrier, they might not move freely. Then any other citizen that move freely does the kidnapping and negotiate. Because we have a victim, even in the National Assembly, our Imam, though a star, but acting as the Imam, you know, so was actually a kidnap from here by Southern, I, I don't want to accept it, but to, to tell you how the syndicate operate, by people who cannot even speak Hausa language, so they are not even from the North. They kidnap him in the night, blindfolded him from Zuba, drive through Kano, whatever, until they reach the Boko Haram camp. The moment they arrived there, those people that came were settled. He has some money in his car, and uh, they, they went with his car. Those people that brought him handed over to the Boko Haram. He is evidently believed that because they are there doing their religious, which is similar to the Islamic practice. So he, he don't need any associate to tell you that it is a Boko Haram camp. So you can see the syndicate. Just to elaborate that, so they are interconnected. Now, taming the Boko Haram, it is there. Even the, the host governor, I think Professor Zulum, has welcomed and he has seen changes within this. The issue now is that my bone of contention, mm -hmm. I was thinking that the House being the, I mean, the majority APC, they should have called an emergency sitting, even if need be, to confirm the service chiefs with an immediate speed of a light. Mm. I was thinking that we should, but I'm very astonished that the House was not reconvened to have just, you know, clear them and pass them. Now the service chief, they have to start action. So I was thinking the executive and the National Assembly leadership should have been in tandem. Yeah, but they can start with, uh, they can start as acting, can they? They have started yeah. actually. Uh -huh. They have started, I've even moved down to, to my so, degree, so yes, I learned. Indeed. No, but like what I'm saying, the public to understand that the House should have acted even faster and higher than this. So we knew the pressure that we put on this changing of this service chief as at when due. But nevertheless, just like we read, we saw some people jubilating, especially some naval officers. It is naval or air force yeah. officers. They were jubilating mm -hmm. of the change of the, meaning that goes to tell you that even within themselves, something is wrong. They have either overstayed and we need new bread. But with Erabo and the chief of air staff, I think Erabo is chief of defense staff. Yes, he is. With them now, and with the issue that probably, I think this year is the time for the Tucano arrive. aircraft to arrive. And with some other sophisticated weapons that they have gathered, just like we said, we cannot discuss their strategy, security, and the media. But I believe we have now not just hope to sell, but half that we can rely upon. Well, scoring 25 out of 100 points and the latest ranking um, of, the, of Transparency International, it's not very good news for Nigeria, even deepened further in the ranking, I think, to 149 uh, position. Oh, some people are saying, what's going on with the fight against corruption? Are we really on with this fight or we have, we have given up hope on it? Let me quickly take you up, uh, Honorable. This issue of uh, CPI, it is uh, the Corruption Perception Index. Index yeah. See, the issue of corruption in Nigeria, in my own terms, I categorize, we have what we call macro and micro. Mm. 
-hmm. And I think now the micro corruption is the one that is eating deep. We have or we have not yet put in place machineries to checkmate this micro corruption. corruption. So in, in other words, it's not a surprise to you. It's and not a surprise to me, actually. The, the ranking is not a surprise to you. The ranking and is And it's very not much in order. Well, it is in order in the sense that this is the perception, you know, we have to understand the methodology and uh, the, the philosophy behind the, the CPI scenario by Transparency International in Germany. Even the United States, in this rating, they have shifted ground negatively. So until we understand the nitty gritty of the corruption perception index, how they gather their data, then we might not live to appreciate. Yeah, but, but you, as an ordinary Nigerian, uh, well, you're not an ordinary Nigerian, but you're just looking on, uh, you know, from your no, perspective. No, I'm really disturbed about the corruption. Was well, it not just a while ago when we were discussing the COVID negative, you know, perception about it? It is the issue of corruption. The presidency has responded. They say that this is um, it's a verdict on Nigerians, not Buhari. What do you make of that, Honorable Abonta? That is a, a kind of shifting um, attention and tactics. So my friend Yunus is a very honest man. There is no, he told us, no machinery put in place to check this corruption, be it, be it micro or macro. You see, the, the machinery put in place, if at all, to fight corruption is non-existent. The operators of the government, let me say so, are playing deep in the corruption matter. You agree with him? The just perception, I agree. You see, I'm not going to even the APC, but he's, <laughs> he's a real progressive in it. You see, if you look at the perception outside, you don't need a, a rocket science to know uh, the, the, the corruption status of Nigeria. You pick it from the streets as you walk. The lives of the people, the feelings of the people, the action of the people will tell you all you need to do. No matter whichever index they used to pick the corruption level, they are right. But I want to agree that Nigerians are also, out of frustration, are involved. The person who does corruption in the Wusei market was not sent by Buhari, mm -hmm. but it was a big, it's a lot of the bigger corruption of somebody sitting somewhere big to, do, to deny him what is due him. The gate man who does some collections illegally to do certain things was not sent by Buhari. But the man who should provide for the gate man had taken all. He has nothing to do left over but to catch whosoever is available. So, Nigeria uh, quickly, remains corrupt. And until the system changes, it's unfortunate we found ourselves in a government now that have no clue, no idea to fight or who do not want to fight corruption. Because a lot of corruption matters had come before this present government that has been swept under the carpet. You just mentioned one now, something billions and other. This is something that should be treated like COVID itself. The three issues that we've raised this morning, only one of them speaks to the matter of hope or change, which is the fact that uh, the service chiefs have been changed. Changes. But even that, you know, security situation remains very dire. I'm wondering, you know, we're in a new year. It's... Uh, it's the second day of February in this, oh. in this new year. It seems to be running pretty fast. Uh, I'm wondering, what are your expectations in the three critical areas that we have mentioned? COVID-19 made it into this new year. Security is still on the front burner. And look at, looking at the matter of corruption, it looks like we're losing hope in that regard. What are your thoughts? I and mean, when, when you're talking to your constituency, for instance, to say, yes, I'm in government, but... I believe that things can be better. Because if you lose hope and you're in government, you know, what should, what should the people hang on to? If you say it looks like we're losing hope, I will ask you, we never had hope <laughs> in the system. At the beginning, it is a government that took more than one year to boost. Is that because you're in the PDP? Oh, well, maybe if you think so. Not because I'm in PDP, because I'm looking at the totality of the feelings of the people. What we are praying is for hope to come. What we are praying is for the change to come. Not that we are losing it. We so, are praying for it. For the government, from this government? Well, somebody says it's not too late. Um, the, the Jega, the former chairman of uh, INEC, prayed and lamented and said, we are disappointed. But we are praying that within the, the two years left that he can still make an amend. That's is, from him. Is that your prayer as well, Honorable? 
Well, it is, but the, in a little, the, the prayer could be modified to have saying mm -hmm. we need more action. Let it do more upon what they are doing. Because you see, to even sustain a system is something else. That the system did not collapse. We should give kudos to the anchors of the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, of, the, of the system. Two, when we talk about this, let me quickly say, when the president says it is the Nigeria's rating, I agree with him because we are looking at the corruption at the federal level. What of the 774 local governments? Is this Buhari that oversees them? The corruption that is taking place there? What of the 36 states of the federation? Is this, Buhari, is this the federal government that oversees the corruption under the nose of the governors? So, and this CPI takes all it is in total. So, you see, the federal level is there and then the one at the state and, and then at the local government. Then talk less of even in the marketplace. Mm. Your common gate man, some, when, when, when he is bribed, he will allow people to kill you. Mm. So the issue generally is that the government is trying, but like we said, and the APC government, considering how it took and where the country was, I think they have tried. Now our foreign reserve is being growing Mm. Uh, I, we have not given an account of the excess crude uh, account yet, but at least our foreign reserve is within the range of 36 or thereabout. And with all this thing put in place, I agree with my brother. I am from the APC. Yes, we are booting gradually. Okay. It is the system. But ah. we hope when we boot finally, we shall boot well. Well, it's a prayer. <laughs> but maybe he, he, he entered an area. Maybe that, we should say uh, amen uh, to uh, that. Honorable. No, I won't uh, say me. He entered an area that I said that, that um, we are grateful that it didn't collapse from what they had. I agree. We handed over something very, very healthy to them. We are grateful that it had not died, but no. it's a bus though. So <laughs> we're going to do something. We will not leave here today. We'll continue this conversation. <laughs> but we have to thank both of you for coming on Sunrise City this morning. Mm -hmm. Honorable Yunus Ahmad Abubakar is a member of the APC and a member House Committee on Loans, AIDS and Debt Management. And Honorable Nkema Bonta is a member of the PDP, a former chairman House Committee on Public Petition. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on Sunrise City this morning. Thank you.